Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been inaugurating a controversial Hindu temple built on the ruins of a mosque in the city of Ayodhya. The opening of the temple comes as Modi is campaigning for a record third term as Prime Minister. The temple's inauguration fulfills a key campaign pledge to Hindu nationalists, for whom the project has symbolic value. The destruction of the 16th century mosque in 1992 sparked religious rioting in which thousands of people, mostly Muslims, uh, were killed. Let's speak to DW's Delhi Bureau Chief Amrita Chima for more on this story. Amrita, it really seems like no expense has been spared for this ceremony. Can you tell us more about what is happening there today and what this all represents? Hi, Claire. So what's happened today in Ayodhya is the consecration of the Ram Temple and the idol of Ram. Uh, a 51-inch idol was unveiled today and uh, um, with a, the uh, idol had a blindfold that was taken off. So now the idol has life. So for the believing Hindus, what's happened today is historic because they say Ram has come back to his birthplace. And that is Ayodhya and this particular site at the Ram Temple. Now, huge ceremonies have been held, uh, not just today, but uh, in the coming, in the past few days. Day and night rituals, protracted long rituals have been performed. And today, the prime minister and the various priests who were uh, responsible for the ceremony consecrated this temple. As you said, no expense spared, billions were spent, but uh, apparently most of the money that was spent what came from donations from people because Ram is a very beloved and popular uh, god in India, particularly in northern India. And for them, it was uh, absolutely a, a historic day uh, and that, that, that this temple was consecrated. So clearly an event that was very close to many people's hearts. And yet it was also controversial too, was it not? I mean, this is a temple that has been built on the site of a mosque that was raised by Hindu mobs in 1992. That's right. This site was, uh, there was a mosque here on this very site, a 16th century mosque called the Babri Masjid. In 1992, as you said, Hindu radicals demolished the mosque and said it had been built on an old Hindu temple. Now, this uh, saga continued for many, many, many years. And then in 2019, the Supreme Court ruled that the demolition of the mosque had been illegal, but uh, that they said that a temple could be built on this uh, same site and, and, and another uh, place was, another plot of land was given to build a new mosque. Now, this has been very controversial for many people, especially it's led to a lot of Hindu-Muslim tensions. But once the Supreme Co uh, Court ruling was made, it was clear that uh, the temple would be built. And it was at that time, Claire, accepted by most of the Muslim organizations because it was a court ruling. But there was a festering sense of unease. It's been a festering wound for them for decades. And today, for many of them, they felt a sense of kind of disappointment that in the end, the temple has been uh, inaugurated, the temple has been consecrated, but there's no sign of any justice which they'd hope they'd get through the Indian legal system. So does this then also have uh, modern day political repercussions? I'm curious how this might play into elections that we're expecting to see in India this year. Well, certainly the opposition believes that this whole consecration and the timing of this con consecration was to do with uh, uh, Indian elections. This is an election year in India. The elections have not been announced, but they will take place this summer at the very latest. So the opposition believes that this was a political maneuver by the government to win support. And as a result, they also felt that it was wrong to mix religion and politics together. So the senior members of the main opposition Indian Congress party did not attend the ceremony. And this is not to say they are not believing Hindus, but they just felt that the ceremony was wrong and it was not secular enough. A secular in, in, in a constitution. So they stayed away. Prime Minister Modi says this has nothing to do with elections. Building of this temple was a part of his election manifesto from way back in 2014. And he believes, and I think a lot of people also support this view, that he's reflecting the views of believing Hindus who believe that this temple needed to be built and Ram needed to come back after some 500 years back to where he belonged, back where he belonged, uh, 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 was born. So the thing is that obviously 
there's every indication that given the excitement and the frenzy and the religious fervor we've seen in the last few days, that this could play into uh, the government's hands and they would come back with a resounding uh, victory. Hmm. Uh, now, India is officially a secular country, Amrita, but, but with Modi appealing to Hindu nationalism, mm -hmm. what do you think that tells us about what the future holds for the role of religion in India? Well, Claire, that is a big question because, you know, many secular Hindus are also asking themselves, what does this all mean for the future of India? India has a secular constitution where it is clearly enshrined that the rights of minorities will be protected, where it clearly states that there'll be a separation of religion and politics. And seeing an event and a spectacle of this kind, which has been going on for the past kind of uh, several weeks, the prime minister himself has been just drinking coconut water and eating fruits and sleeping sleeping on the floor as a ritual to purify himself for this particular consecration. So, uh, so many secular Hindu feels, uh, Hindus feel that this just simply does not belong into a secular India, that a, a head of government should be doing uh, these things. But in the end, the people have to decide what they feel. But certainly there are big concerns in certain areas that India's secular nature, India's secular nature is, and constitution is being undermined by, by events like this. Amrita, thank you so much. Wonderful speaking to you, as always. That is Amrita Chima, uh, DW's Delhi Bureau Chief for us.